good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we will uh, talk today about how a mediator can deal with cultural differences, what are they, and uh, first, uh, there are some technical things we would like to discuss uh, before we introduce ourselves and so on. So um, now let's introduce first so who we are and what we do. Olesa. Um, hello, everyone. Um, uh, I am Alessia Ivanimka. I'm a Ukrainian lawyer and um, mediator. I'm a mediator since 2019. Uh, also, I work for um, Ukrainian National University as a professor of labor and family law for more than uh, 15 years. Um, I'm also a member of National Association of Mediators of Ukraine and uh, cooperate with City Center of Child and give authority in the field of family mediation. Now, as um, I'm currently living in Germany, I work for EMI as a um, um, person who audit curriculum and training program. And uh, also I'm a visiting researcher at the university in Brussels. Nice to meet you. and. Um, um very glad to see you all here and um, uh, very grateful you that you choose our workshop. Um really hope that it will be useful. Right. It will, we've prepared. <laughs> so, thank you, Alessa. Um, uh, my name is Olga and uh, I really appreciate Alessa's invitation to participate in this workshop. I am not a mediator and I am not a lawyer, but I am the person who has um, experience working in many international contexts. I worked for UNICEF. I also worked with, cooperated with Ministry of Education of Ukraine, and I'm a teacher at the university, professor at the university, teaching uh, cross-cultural communication to international relationship students. Uh, I also have experience working for U.S. Embassy. So um, my expertise is mostly in um, how to build the communication be between people from different cultures. And uh, I'm so grateful that Olesia thought, uh, had this idea that uh, this is something we could share in your uh, expertise co uh, context, uh, content, context. Uh, so um, Alessa was the person who reminded me all the time, uh, we are not talking to consultants, we are talking to mediators, it's different roles. So she's the one who gave the frame. And my, my task was to show what to look at. As you can see, uh, I'm not only a consultant, but I'm also a trainer, which means our session is going to be highly interactive. We expect your engagement and participation. Of course, it will be recorded and you will be able to watch something if you miss some part, but we will really appreciate your active engagement because that is how the knowledge is built when we try something, when we exchange something. And um, we are, uh, we with Alessia here not to give, but to provoke the conversation and discussion and learn from you as well, especially me, because I'm not mediator, but I deal with conflicts and I'm sure that you will have something interesting to share. <clears throat> so, um, uh, how we are going to work, uh, we have not started at 10, uh, but we will try to squeeze that. So if at some point uh, things go too fast because we try to squeeze everything planned into uh, the time, please let us know, we will slow down. Uh, this topic was the challenge because you either talk for 15 minutes what cross-cultural communication is, or have a two full day workshop. So, so to have it in three hours was a challenge for us. Um, 
uh, we will have a break at about 11.20 plus minus because we will not um, stop it in the middle of activity, of course. Uh, but so that you know that you will have 20 minutes to breathe in, breathe out, maybe answer that email which you think of answering now. So, uh, and uh, we are going to end by 13. Um, the first thing which we want to start with is you have chosen our workshop among six, uh, among six option, uh, options, which means you have some expectations and we want to know which ones. What is the question, question you want to be answered today? You have brought some questions here, maybe more than one. Pick the most important without answer to which this time would be a waste. Okay, difference between intercultural and multicultural. Interesting. What does the Imsmenti web page use for? <laughs> Thank you for the question. You will see with, during the session strategies at all, how to cooperate with international partners, how I as a mediator be partial case and culturally diverse case. Do we have to know both cultures as mediator? Um, how to introduce main cultural point to other part and how to take care of the cultural main point. Thank you for your questions. How do I mediate with people when I don't understand their behavior? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. How to deal with difficult clients if they are from different countries? Um, yeah, good question. How to include all perspectives when one person due to his cultural background will not tell about it by himself? Yeah, that is a challenge mediators and other experts face. Do we need to make sure each part understands the other culture? That would be really nice. <laughs> we will talk. Uh, and we also wrote about that in the article, which will be published. Rana, maybe you will add some information on that. <laughs> yeah, so there, there is a collection of articles and in one of the, in our article, we wrote about that. Hope they're understanding the difference. So, uh, how to deal with not knowing what behavior is culturally expected? Mm -hmm. I think that we have answer on more questions in our presentation. Yes, uh, most questions are answered. Some might be answered partially. Again, we will remind you that this is only three hours with 10, uh, 20 minutes break, which means we will not have chance to cover all the theory, all the practice. What we will try to do is to give you general understanding and where to look at where uh, where to find the answers and um, to show the direction, not the ready-made answers, because um, cross-cultural competence, it's more the attitude than the um, uh, list of tricks you can use. There is no magic, and we will talk about that now. So uh, two more questions for you. Take a few moments to think about your own need and expertise, experience, tick the comments that apply to you. So now if you are looking at Mentimeter, Mentimeter you can see five questions. Uh, please agree with those uh, that are about you and disagree with those that are not. That is for us to understand who are in the room. Uh, question one, I work with clients from different cultures. Question two, I work with people from different cultures in one team. So I work in international team. Question three, I would appreciate practical advice on how to be successful in different culture. Next, I need to be able to deal with different styles of com communication. And I wish I could make my international meetings more productive. Okay, the most popular are practical advice and different styles of communication, you can see. 
Uh, not everyone has international meetings, which is natural. And of course, not everyone has clients from different cultures or people believe that. <laughs> and not everyone works um, with people from different cultures in one team. That is interesting question. We will get back to that. How many of you are actually working with people from different cultures? And the last thing we want to ask you today before go, uh, move, moving on to see how many different countries or cities we've got today so that we could refer to you as the representatives of particular cultures. Germany, good. <laughs> Leipzig, Poland, Brussels, Warsaw, France, Sri Lanka, ah, Lithuania, Greece, Berlin, Wroclaw, Vilnius, Japan. Japan. So this is the kind of tool which shows the biggest, uh, more frequent answers. So we can see that there are many people from Germany, more than, uh, more, uh, than two or three people from Poland, Lithuania, uh, France is quite big, which means more than one person has uh, typed that. Okay. I hope during these three questions, we have answered that question, why do we use Mentimeter? To engage you, of course, <laughs> and to get some information about it. So, uh, this is uh, what we uh, will use during our practical tasks, and we get back to our presentation. So, so, um, this is the um, uh, definition, which Alessa <laughs> kindly, <laughs> kindly uh, suggested uh, to use. Uh, mediation is a process for resolving disputes where intermediary helps conflicting party have a conversation to generally resolve their concern. My job as the expert on cross-cultural communication is this part, have a conversation have a conversation where we hear each other and where we understand each other. That's where we will uh, focus most today. And why um, there are two things we want to emphasize for mediators, um, why culture is so important to take into consideration. First thing is because culture differences may cause co conflict itself. Because conflict is a clash between uh, different thought process, different perception, different understanding, different attitudes. So if people pay attention or value different things, naturally there are conflicts. Uh, we know cases when um, there, there were... Um, there were disputes not only because uh, not only because some factual violation, but just because people saw the situation the different way. I'm sure you as mediators know uh, such situation as well. The second thing which is important to remember for mediators as well, but for everyone, is that in different cultures there is different idea, different expectations of how the conflict should be dealt with how it should be resolved. Do we talk about conflict or not? Do we see conflict as positive thing or not? Do we engage as many people we can into this conflict or keep it uh, straight? Is it only about the subject of the conflict or do we move to the personal level? Uh, do we show a lot of emotions during the, do we express a lot of emotions during the conflict? Uh, or it's not uh, appropriate. All of that uh, influences the process that mediator gets in during resolving the dispute, the case. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I forgot to mention one thing. If you have any question in the process, you can raise virtual hand uh, in Zoom or uh, type your question in chat. 
So if some, something you want to stop it, something just stop us and uh, we will stop there. Or if the question is going to be answered later, we will let you know. So it's the worst what you can do for people who participate in some workshop uh, to make them think only about one question without answering it. So if you do have questions, please ask them. Cultures you have worked with, which you find challenging. Uh, you can write the name of the country, origin, or whatever name for the culture you pick. Olesia, could you please follow the chat and read if something is clear? Yeah. I just see if the slides will be sent by mail. Uh, we will share it. Uh, yeah. So, of the cultures you have worked with, which one were challenging? Catholic, Muslim. Catholic Muslim families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's quite challenging. Yeah. Sweden, Latin America, Italia, Poland, US, Britain. Okay. Uh, international. Ma many, many challenging countries. <laughs> Japan, Very... Turkey, Japan, Korea. We have a guest here from Japan. <laughs> uh, we okay. will be able. No one has a last experience with Greece, China, Kyrgyzstan. All EU countries, Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. India and Pakistan, migrants who have moved to United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Alessia, what would, was the most challenging culture for you in your experience? Uh, in my experience, uh, it was in family mediation and man was from uh, Egypt and uh, woman was from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you. Quite different uh, yes. culture uh, and distant and, as well. And different view to life, um, to everything. Children, money, work. Exactly. Uh, different views is what Alessa mentioned. Now we will ask you, what aspects of cross-cultural interaction have you, uh, do you find puzzling and why? Uh, for example, for me, I really like joking and I need to remember that in different contexts, I must be really careful with that. So for you, what is the most puzzling aspect of communication when it comes to different cultures? Now we've got the first answer. Yay. Decision I just want to say, not to write. Yeah. If so, uh, someone, uh, we can listen to one person. Direct communication versus indirect, where decision is taken. Do you see the process of decision making or not? Body language, tone of voice. When people don't answer questions clearly. It's interesting, we can assume more or less uh, where people who are writing comments are. Uh, and humor beliefs position oh. of women and men yeah exactly idea of time emotional hey. speaking language expressing your needs clearly mm -hmm. language thank time. you for mentioning that many people forget how important it's not only um, cross-cultural knowledge but language itself that language limits now uh most of us are speaking and listening in non-native language, English. It's international, but everyone is limited with that. The meaning of money. Difference between thoughts and written words in males. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I just want to mention how, uh, what a pleasure it is to work with such a group where people interact and share. 
uh, that gives hope because we had a little worry uh, uh, before the beginning what if there will be black screens and no answers and thank you for that okay so we are moving on and we will talk a little bit about what culture is um there are many many definitions uh we will um not look at all of them uh just uh, will focus uh, on some aspect today. So uh, when we talk about cultures, there are things we can see or observe, and there are things we cannot see, and, and, but they are there, and they influence uh, any processes. So if we talk about what we can observe, what do you think I'm sure many of you have seen this iceberg of culture. Those of you who were interested in cross-cultural communication, uh, iceberg metaphor is something which is above the water and something which is below the water. Here we use the metaphor of onion. Uh, it was suggested by Trompenar, uh, one of the researchers of culture. So when we look at the onion, there is something we can see. And there is some layers inside we cannot see. So what we can observe? Uh, traditions, religions. Uh, your guitar wrote. I, I, I would think. say the body language. You can see how people how people act towards you and how they look in the first place. What they how they are dressed up, how much they take care of their visual expression. Exactly. Yeah. How they look how they move. Is there anything else we can see? This is one more cultural thing. How long uh, the pose can be before it becomes awkward. For Ukrainians, it's really short. <laughs> so I'm trying to give it time. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we have prepared this slide too, mm -hmm. just, just, just to give you some ideas. So yes, Excel. Thank you very much. You're you're absolutely right. The way people look, the way people dress, the way people uh, touch each other, if they do, the language they speak, uh, what is the ethics? If we spend a long time enough, we can see it without asking. Uh, expressing of emotions, if uh, people do is if it is acceptable or not to express emotions food discussion and argumentative style if you talk to people you can observe how they built these thoughts do they based on fact do they based on personalities do they start from general to specific or uh, focus on details and then come to some uh, general conclusion we can also see the rhythm and pace, how fast people walk, how fast people talk, how, how long are people able to pause, <laughs> all that, uh, the dress and, and behavior. Behavior is the only thing we can observe. There are also hidden things which are inside uh, inside the onion. And those of you who uh, have... Uh, uh, being interested in cross-cultural communication, I'm sure you can tell what we cannot see, what is under the water of that iceberg or what is inside that onion. Any ideas? Style when they write a text. Yeah, thank you. That is interesting. What you do not see in the first place is, uh, are the convictions of the, um, of the people you're talking to. And yeah, values. Conventions, uh, may I say beliefs, yeah, what they believe, meanings, for sure. So yes, inside the onion, there is value. You've mentioned that. There is personal history, background. Um, there are also norms, what is considered to be good and what is considered to be bad, what is considered to be appropriate, what is considered to be inappropriate, and basic assumption. Yeah, um, 
uh, fear to be judged, our inner thoughts, all that stuff, that is more individual level. Uh, that is more about um, psychology, not anthropology, not, not cultural studies, but still uh, we cannot see that and that influences a lot. And thank you for mentioning that because um, on, the, on our interaction, not on, uh, culture is not the only factor that influences the interaction. Psychological condition or emotional condition of the person influences as well. Uh, so the culture has three uh, aspects how it influences our behavior. It guides our sense making. So answer the question, why are we doing that? And that might be conscious or unconscious. So if you do not ask the person why he or she is doing something, they might never have the conscious answer they might never be aware why but still there is a reason reason is always there if the person knows about that or not uh, that uh, values norms and basic assumptions influence how we take decisions and uh, uh, how we make choices those are filters through which we are looking at the world and people are looking at the world the important thing to remember about this, and we've made specific slide for that, because that is the core. Cultural uh, difficulties appear because similar values in different cultures can be implemented through different behavior. For example, for some, in some cultures, it, when I respect the person I am listening to, I can, in some cultures, look at the person and listen. In other cultures, it's considered to be impolite. And if I respect you, I'm not looking at you directly. I'm listening. In some cultures, to show that I respect and listening to you means that I am asking questions or show that I'm listening, saying like, no way, really, tell me more. In other cultures, it is impolite to interrupt if I want to show my respect and then I'm listening. So the same value in different cultures can be expressed through different behavior. The, and it has the other connection as well. Similar behavior can be driven by different values. For example, when I ask you a question and you do not answer, it might mean different things. The same behavior might mean different things. One, you understood everything and you do not have any question. Second, you do not understand anything, but you need to save the face and you do not ask any questions. Third, and that we should also remember there are some outer factors. Maybe the internet connection is bad and you didn't hear that I asked you to, if you have any questions and that is why I do not have any response. So <laughs> behind the behavior, there might be different things. The thing is that we interpret behavior of other people based on our experience, based on our norms, based on our values. And the core of cross-cultural competence is to remember this behind different, uh, behind the same behavior can be different reason. The same thing, the same value can be expressed in different ways by different people. Okay. So now we will have some practical tasks. Don't worry, it's a lot, but we will go step by step. So I want uh, to suggest you to think about your organization or if you are self-employed, just think about how you work. Uh, at this moment, you might need something to take notes, like not to write sentence by sentence, but to mark some 
things you would like to mention when um, you would talk about your organization. Think about what is the leadership, how, how people are managed, how decisions are taken, how information is shared, how people communicate with each other. Uh, do people build personal relationship, for example? Are they friends or it's just business? How do you deal with time? How do you deal with quality? Uh, how, how do you do you treat your customers? Uh, how do you build cooperation with other organizations or people? Is your organization top down or bottom up? Like the decisions are made on the top and are given to the subordinates or there is a lot of initiative from uh, everyone uh, how the company should act. Uh, is it people oriented or task oriented? Is it risk focused or action oriented? Is it quality focused, cost driven? So you will have now uh, two minutes to think about your own organizations and take some notes. Here is an example for you, but it doesn't have to be that extended. Just take some notes, maybe one minute. Okay. Um, we will uh, join you into small um, session rooms, breakout rooms in groups of three or four for five minutes. It's not long, for five minutes. Your task will be to get to know the people who are there. That's actually one of the purpose why we organize such events. And also tell a little bit about organization where you work and try to find some things which are in common. And maybe you will notice some differences, but try to find things that are in common uh, uh, between your organization or your attitude to work. Oh. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back. Yeah, we come back. Okay. Alive. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we were worried about you a little bit because it Thanks. was your first <laughs> breakout session today. And we will have one bigger one uh, a, after the break when you will be uh, doing practical tasks. Uh, anyway, let's say that you decided to make some partnership with the organization you've just heard about. You were listening to other people or person, or you didn't, <laughs> then you just observe. Um, and can you see now, even now, at the, after a couple of minutes talking, some uh, things that can cause misunderstanding in the future if you decide to work together? Can you see, it? Uh, have you noticed it or not? To answer your questions, please go to Menti. You have it on your phone or, oops. Or in chat as well. And in chat and um, we can see the answers. So can you see anything that might cause misunderstandings? 16 people source something. Five people not sure, four people do not see anything. I'll remind you, you had only five minutes to talk. It's only five minutes. Then we move to the next one. Thank you for your answers. What do you think might cause the misunderstanding? This is uh, anonymous. So if you share something, don't worry, we will not be able to track back who wrote which. Uh, so if you notice something already, just after a couple of minutes of conversations, and I do not know the names, but um, if you do not have anyone to talk to, try to think about me and the lesson, you already see how we interact, how, how we um, speak, what people, what things we consider important or not. 
Uh, can you see anything that personality, okay, cultural differences, language, different values, position of uh, woman in society, language, mm. personalities. I don't know anything about the colleagues' working environments, frequent number of leadership, the sympathy or no sympathy. Okay, not clear audio, not clear language. Yeah, that is not culture related, but anyway. <laughs> oh, different understanding of terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the point of all this interaction and what we wanted to show you is that um, culture is not only about country. Uh, there are several models that try to explain culture. What cultures are there, classify them, um, cluster, and so on. But many of them are focusing on the countries. And uh, that is not so accurate. Because uh, if you were lucky to get into the room with the person from the same country that you are, you still can... You still can notice that some things are different. So people who work in different organization in one country uh, can have cultural differences. People who work in the same organization in different departments still can have some differences. So almost any interaction is intercultural interaction. We understand that the person might have different values, beliefs, assumptions, and his or her behavior might be explained by those beliefs. Uh, so the point is that cross-cultural communication uh, and cross-cultural competence are important not only when you are talking to foreigners. They are important whenever you see the person from the other group and that group might be smaller and bigger. I'm sure you can remember from your own um, experience, for example, people from different schools, yeah, from your university and the other university, or people from different parts of the city where you lived, one city or another city, or people from different groups. For example, when you are with your school friends, you behave, behave one way. When you are with your neighbors, you might behave another way because it's different group, different values, different norms, different expectations. Uh, now we will talk a little bit about different models. Oh Again, someone was saying something? Yeah, uh, about different models. And um, there are really, really many of them, a lot of attempts to structure such an intangible thing as culture. And uh, there is no ideal model. Again and again, we will remind that any model is inaccurate. It helps to structure the knowledge. It helps to understand the world. But every model is inaccurate. It was made by human. It was structured by human. Human are subjective. That's how it works. So uh, the first model we would like you to look about is about loose cultures and tight cultures. Do you remember inside the onion, there are norms and assumptions, uh, our beliefs, what is right and what is wrong. Uh, it can be about anything, about appearance, about language, about uh, work ethics. So there was a research that showed um, the range of uh, cultures from loose to tight. Loose cultures are the cultures that are, excuse me, I will mute. Yeah, thank you. Um, loose tight cultures are the cultures where different behavior which deviate from norm are tolerable. So it's okay if you close different uh, way. It's okay if your language is not is different from mine. It's okay if you do not sit when you are supposed to sit or do not stand when you are not supposed to stand. Things like that. 
and there are tight cultures tight cultures which are which do not tolerate deviation of the norm so when the person observes something which is not in the norm according to their personal belief to their beliefs they really uneasy so they do not take it easy it's difficult for them to tolerate it so uh, you might be able to find your own country here you might agree or disagree again i remind you that uh, every model is a little uh, a little bit inaccurate, but it's useful because it shows the trend. Also, culture is a very dynamic thing. These are results of 2014, almost nine, uh, almost 10 years, which means things could have changed since then. I think they definitely have changed in Ukraine, for example, uh, through the last year. Uh, okay. So that was one model. Another model, which is uh, really popular and is considered, uh, considered one of the most reliable is a Lewis model, culture model. So uh, this model divide, uh, divides all cultures into three groups, but one group merges into another. Can you see some cultures are like really on the um, polarity and some cultures are in between. Uh, there are three groups. Blue group are called linear active. Those are people who are focused on facts, perceive information linear and um, prefer planning. Uh, that is really stereotypical. Uh, again, I will remind you that every model is a little bit inaccurate, and we will talk about stereotypes later, but it helps to understand the tendencies. Red groups, multi-active. For these people, relationship is the most important. They are people-oriented, and sometimes the uh, result suffers because of that, because for these people, it's really important to save the relationship. Uh, unlike, for example, blue ones, linear active for whom result is the most important thing. And um, multi-active people usually behave uh, really emotionally, doing a lot of things at the same time. Um, uh, and uh, are considered to be impulsive. Yellow group is the group which is called reactive. Uh, for this group, the process is really important. So the etiquette. Uh, one more is Hofstadter model. Uh, that is the most widely used in business. Uh, it has six dimension, power distance, um, how much I rely on the power, uh, uncertainty avoidance, how comfortable I am with not knowing what's going to be next. Spoiler, Ukrainians are easy, are really uneasy, not knowing what's going to be next. Uh, then masculinity, femininity, uh, that is about task-oriented, people-oriented, individual, uh, individualism, collectivism. Is it more important uh, for me to take care of interests of the group or take care of my personal interests? Uh, long orientation, sh short term orientation, am I able to plan for long or am I able to plan for short? And in the indulgence restraint, if I am, if I believe that there is a place for pleasure in my life. So if I think it's important not only to work, but also to enjoy my life. Um, uh, this is, for example, uh, the um, the indicators for Ukraine and Germany. Uh, for example, we can see that uh, Ukrainians are more stressed when they don't know what is going on than uh, German people and also Ukrainians, for example, uh, do not consider uh, pleasure from life as valuable compared to 
um, uh, German people. Um, the model we will focus on today is Trompenard sculpture model. The, uh, this model has uh, seven dimensions, polar, and it is not either or. It is where you are on this line. Yeah, because you might be more to one pole or to another pole, but not necessarily on the pole. So the first is uh, universalism, particularism. To what extent do the same rules apply to all situations and are they different according to the circumstances? That is quite awful, the uh, reason of disputes and the reasons of disagreement. Do I believe that everyone is equal, uh, equal in the face of the law? or the rule in our organization, or I am looking um, uh, at hoc and uh, looking at particular case and think uh, how we should read that and that person. Next, individualism, collectivism, what is more important to act for me, to contribute to myself or to contribute to the group? So what is the priority for me? And that is also sometimes the disagreements and dispute. Um, neutral or effective? Uh, do, is it appropriate for me to show emotions? Is it appropriate to show that I am upset? Am I expecting from you to show emotions? We had a case when uh, one employee uh, was in conflict uh, with employer because employer didn't show the affection and uh, affection wrong word probably didn't um didn't appreciate the effort and by appreciation the employee imagine good words smiles noticing that something is done um achievement ascription uh do I get something because I achieved something or do I get something because I uh, do I deserve something because I have particular statues? Specific and diffuse, that is about how, how in detail uh, I go. Do I, uh, for example, when planning, is it important for me to detail, uh, to um, plan in every detail or is it just enough for me to agree uh, that we are doing something and I get nervous when you want some details from me. Uh, sequential synchronic, that is attitude to time. Uh, do we do something, uh, some things at the same time or do we finish one, start another? And inner directed, outer directed, uh, does life happen to me or do I create life? Am I responsible for what is going on in my life? Or I put the responsibility on the outer factors. Um, I will skip that. We will not have much time. Uh, but uh, I will show you the uh, useful online resources. Three of them are free. And you will be able to use it af uh, after the break during our practical task. I will show you how they look. So the first is, can you say it well, or that is too small, bigger. So this is the website, uh, Hofstadter Insight. Hofstadter is the author of one of the model, and this is online tool that is based on that model. So for example, you can type a country, unless we are safe to type our, right? And as um, oops, in yes, it doesn't your brain work. Works. Yeah. And um, Algeria. who would like to compare to Ukraine? <laughs> what country can we choose? Let's say Italy, for example. Italy. Okay. Italy. And we can pick even more if we want, but this should be enough. So you can see some um, visualization and also you can, below you can see some description 
what each dimension means. For example, power distance, the less powerful members of institutions and organizations within a country expect and accept that power is uh, distributed unequally. Unequally. And here is the explanation about Ukraine and about Italy. Individualism. So you will be able to read through all of those. That is something you can use. Also, one more uh, research. Yes, Olga. Fair question. Do you have opportunity to um, compare these results? Because we understand that the system try to estimate and compare two countries. And at the same time, if you talk about the real life, uh, do we have some, I don't know, the difference between the uh, estimation from the side of system and real life? This is brilliant question. What do you think? What, what I think? Can you, because... Sorry, can you explain the question? I, I didn't quite get what you're asking. Uh, like, uh, do I get it right? How close is estimation given by website to the real life? And if I have the evidence. Thank you for this question. Keep it there because that is exactly what we will talk about after I show you the, okay? So uh, we have not so much time before break, but I, I, I will do that quickly. And that is really important thing. Thank you for bringing it up. So <laughs> one more, one more uh, resource is based on Trompenar model. If you scroll down, you will see, for example, different uh, measures here. Different measures here, for example, orientation to internal and external, who controls my life. So, and we can see that, for example, Western world believes more than I am responsible for my life. And other countries tend to take less responsibility. Uh, also, you can compare two countries here. I've already compared Germany and Ukraine. So these countries are here, but we can compare something else. Uh, you can compare something else. And when you switch to that, you get visualization. And if you press the arrow, you can see the explanation here what it means what the dimension means and what it does about country coming back to all has question coming back to all has question so whatever model you use whatever model you use a moment here beware of stereotypes Every model is inaccurate. Culture is dynamic. Uh, most of these models are based on countries. But for example, research shows that in Ukraine, there are at least two different unrelated cultures, like two sets of beliefs. Uh, <clears throat> and we also talked that every, besides country, also organization have, can have their uh, um, culture. Uh, any community can have their culture. So instead of what is stereotype? Stereotype is some knowledge that I take and believe it is true for every representative of the group. Prototype, that is another approach. Prototype is that I look at average dimension. I use research to look what is the tendency for a particular culture and use it as starting point, but do not get, take it for granted. Because of course there are deviations. Of course, individuals are different. As you said, they have different background, different personal history, different um, emotional condition they are in and all that influence their behavior. But knowing the tendency can give you the understanding what to ask about. Here at the webs at the previous um, slide, uh, 
I collected the questions and you can find them in our article as well. They are there. Uh, what to think about and what to ask about. So you can find these answers in the models, but that is something you need to make sure that you know right. For example, do people in this culture see open confrontation as productive or threatening? Yeah, are people afraid of conflicts or do they try to avoid them? Uh, I mean, open conflicts, conflicts are there, open confrontations. Are they ready to stick directly and openly or most of the information is usually between the lines? And it might be different from different individualities, but there is a tendency you can see uh, based on these models. And the deviation, like the medium for different culture will be different. Yeah, and individual deviation will be from there. Have I answered your question now? Uh, I, I heard you, but it's difficult, you know, to... Um, I can't say that I totally agree because in these cases we have some like deviation because uh, we have different ge generation, yes, and their attitude change too. And if you use only this system, maybe to to build some the general impression, maybe yes, but um, I don't know. If, for example, if I want to prepare by uh, some negotiation, yes, can I use these resources to make some impression about the people with whom I can yes. meet? You can use the resource, but not to build stereotype, but to build prototype. Prototype mm -hmm. is something you change in the process. Stereotype is something which is fixed and not changed. So yes, you take this uh, information just to get the general idea. You find as much about the organization and the people and the country and the culture as you can. But, and I have one more slide for that, but use flexible thinking mom, uh, model. Observe situation carefully then try to interpret this situation. And that is pretty useful exercise, mental exercise, which I always give to my students. And uh, this is really enjoyable activity. When you observe some behavior, try to find at least two or better three explanations why the person could be behave that way. Yeah, it develops our flexibility of perception. For example, if someone says something unpleasant to you at work, just try to stop and think what other reasons might be besides they do not like you. And that is pretty cool Thank mental you. exercise, which helps. Yeah. Thank you. Can I uh, can I add a little? Yes, In sure. the second part, you will have a case also with uh, clients from different countries. So you could try this um, lean to build your strategy. And uh, as both of you will have the same case, so uh, the result will be different. So maybe it's also you can see in further how it world it will work in practice. Yeah, uh, let's uh, keep that question and get back to it at the end. So, so you will develop this um, um, the idea what to do with it. So, what have we done so far? Because if I remember right, yes, it's break time. So. Uh, what have we done so far? We had a look at who is here in the group. Uh, we heard questions from you that you have. We uh, also talked a little bit about your organizations and that culture is not uh, only about the country. Uh, culture has something um, observable and something hidden and uh, that different behavior can mean the same value, but also uh, the same behavior can be indicator of different value. 
we looked at different models and some of them you will use in the practical task. Don't worry if you do not remember everything, you have, will have the links, you, you will have all the information. We will talk about that about the break. And we also talked about how important it is not to fix on stereotyping, but have more prototyping uh, attitude with flexible thinking. So, uh, um, uh, since I am a trainer and I uh, help people to learn things, we have done already several important things. We have created for you the need to learn a little bit more about culture, I hope. We have created that. We have given you some theory and approach and principle. And we have given you the break for your brain to rest a little bit, to settle on what you've already heard. And the next important thing, which we will do now, um, will be putting this new information into practice. But before we do that, have you come up with any questions during this break about our workshop <laughs> uh, that you would like to be answered now before we move on? Okay, I can see people shaking heads. <laughs> in most cultures, it means no, but not in all. <laughs> so we should remember that as well. Um, I, I would yes. uh, I would like to ask one question regarding the um, the power distance. So as far as I got, uh, the power distance states the fact that if there is a high power distance uh, rating for the country, that people are very um, tend to be obedient regarding uh, higher power hi hierarchies. Um, does this also have an effect on them uh, accepting? directions from higher uh, from, from from higher up positions or is there uh, is there a distinction between that and the um, the re resistance against directions uh, or direct orders good good question thank you um, let's imagine you are my boss and I am your subordinate if I belong to high power distance culture it means that I believe that power is di distributed in equal. So you as boss has, have more power. I as subordinate have little power. Mm -hmm. So I believe that you know better and it's your responsibility. And if you tell me to do something, my task is to do it. If I belong to low uh, power distance culture, it means that I believe that power is distributed more equally. And if you tell me to do something, but I think that is not reasonable, I believe that I have a power to tell you that and to discuss with you this decision. Okay. Have I answered? And yeah, yeah, you did. So if, if I have a high power distance, um, uh, does this also go together with a, with a bit of a communication distance? Because when I'm then really, really close to my employees in a country with a high power distance, could they lack respect then? And yeah, they, they might perceive me? it uh, as you are not the boss, <laughs> because the mm. boss should be sh should believe as well that he and has the power. Approach. Yeah, and if this if it goes there, it could lead to the to a lack of respect and that to a um, increased. Um, challenging of decisions, increased challenging of, uh, of orders. Yes, uh, and also this brings us to one more aspect of uh, cross-cultural uh, cross um, competence is to meet the other person in, at their place. Mm -hmm. So if you know that uh, the other person is representative of high power distance uh, culture, you, for example, dress like a boss should dress. Yeah, you you can 
uh, you can um, use the arrangement in your office so that it was clear that you have, I don't know, a bigger table or something. <laughs> and slowly and patiently shorten the distance. Because if you do it um, abruptly, it just seemed like, okay, he is not the boss. Why oh, should I yeah. take his? Uh, why should I take his um, recommendations? I cannot see him as a boss. Would would, would you also sorry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. You, in this context, okay. would you recommend uh, to uh, speak with this person about this feeling, this feeling you have, and your assumptions? Exactly. Uh, exactly. In the article, uh, we one of the strategies is to um, educate each other about your own culture, about uh, about what you believe, about your assumptions, but also uh, we should keep in mind that whatever rule we implement. For example, if as a boss you implement the rule that you encourage feedback, that uh, your subordinates should express their opinion, uh, that will not happen immediately. They have to believe you. They have to trust you. Actually, all this uh, cross-cultural communication is about building the trust. Yeah. Can I trust you? Do I understand what is behind your behavior? And um, uh, one, uh, and it's true that sometimes when we are too direct or too equal, it may be seen as a signal of weakness. That I am not boss. I do not believe that I am boss. That that is why I am asking you. And if I give you the power. It means that I am making you boss. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Maybe one I... more question and we need to go further. Yeah. Eva. Uh, so um, thank you for the presentation. Really is very in, um, it's not interesting. Over. <laughs> uh, just um, I was wondering if during a mediation, we have in the room very different person from different cultures from i don't know spanish and japanese people what can we do uh i was wondering if it's good idea maybe to make a short presentation of uh, of what you presented if based off uh the theory of the cultural differences just to 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 make them understand and become aware about the difference what do you think um a very good question and very good idea we might go deeper into that in the end but now um uh, i want to show you one thing uh do we need to do we need to talk about cultural difference yes the question is also about the channel, because in some cultures, presentation is perfect way. But in other cultures, personal talk, maybe with tea or something else, yeah, would be more uh, would be more um, effective, efficient. Yeah. So um, sometimes we pick the channel of communication based on our beliefs, our assumptions, our, our behavior. As, uh, it's, all, it's not only important what we sh tell, what we teach, but also in which context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, presentation would work in some cultures, but would not work in others. In another, I'm sure you have that experience when uh, in some cultures you present and people are like, okay, when it's going to be over, it's some official part which should, yes, should, should I, be. By presentation, I didn't mean uh, um, exactly ah, this kind of a presentation. No, I was not clear. Maybe sometimes, yeah, it's talking or in a um, common room or individually, maybe it's we have to suit to 
and to adapt exactly. to the person. Yeah, but if the question was if it is useful to educate people on that, sure. Sure, that is one of the tasks of mediate, uh, to of mediator, I believe, and Olesa um, agreed <laughs> that it should work. Um, when we help uh, counterparts, parties, to see that they have basic difference in perceiving the uh, process. Uh, okay, we uh, we are sliding slowly into question and answer session. We, we have time for that in the end. So one more question and we move on. Emanuela? Yes, um, about the, uh, the presentation in mediation, I think that uh, is, uh, the presentation is very important, uh, but um the the mediator uh must be flexible and conscious i think that that in in that uh space in that time uh or time of uh, mediation um people will not change their mind no so, uh, it's so just we, 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 we 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 have to tell okay we in, in this mediation we have also those problems, but and then nothing more. But we, uh, the, the mediator, has to be conscious that he will uh, fight, will or will uh, have in very well in mind that uh, uh, the, the parties will continue. To think on the same way, yeah, and that's that uh, is... and that is my experience. Uh, I think in oh. in one hour, two hours, nothing in in yeah. their mind, nothing will change. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's this art to know what we can change and what we cannot change, what we can influence, what we cannot influence. Well, Lisa, sorry, I interrupted. Yes, I also want to add that in um, case with mediation, we need to remember that these uh, parties know each other. They know each other before. So they have their own experience. They have their own channel of communication. And of course, we need to remember about this. So quite often, maybe they... Uh, know each other quite well so then we need to try to find something that was missed in this field thank you very much for your question it means that the topic is really important <clears throat> um so have you have you did you have a chance to think about what um cultural peculiarities might uh, influence the um, the case, the course of the case. Have you thought about that? Have you, did you have a chance to uh, talk about this particular thing? Well, we chose an Italian and, and German guys, mm -hmm. and there's a problem of money and financial problem. I think that there are no so huge differences among our own countries from this point of view, also from in this case. Mm -hmm. um, we in Italy manage many kinds of cases. I just asked Matthias if there were examples also in Germany, but I do not really think it's a real problem in this case of cultural differences. That, uh, that in this particular case, culture difference would cause a problem, yeah? You do not think that. Mm. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts, opinions you would like to share? We have some answers already. Relative value placed on relationship versus business result. Yes. Culture, sense of sacrifice, what a job is and the sense of job. Yeah, what is my job and when it ends? Do I need to use my personal connections to, to do that? Uh, the different understanding of mediation, emotions, and money. Yeah, that is something which would influence that. As, is anyone else typing? Should we wait for you? Let us mine, know. Mine hasn't appeared, but 
we, uh, a big thing for us was um, we we didn't agree at all how we would start the case at all as a mediator. Two of us uh, thought we had um, had to have individual sessions. Um, one thought we should get them to the table right away. And mm -hmm. the, the reasons for that were also very different. Yes, that is, um, I am not mediator. I am facilitator who works with group conflicts, uh, like within the big group, not between the people. And one of the ways which makes my profession beautiful is that there are different approaches and there is no one correct way you can do that. Uh, sometimes you just uh, know what you as what I as facilitator or you as mediator are good at and built on those strong sides of ours, uh, our profession. And yeah. how did you start, Matthias? Well, there was there was uh, one voice saying we should meet each person um, individually. Uh, to ask for their positions and what they want, um, their aims. The other person said, um, from Iran, said, the first one was from Italy, the, from Iran said, we should meet them just to get acquainted and to get to know them and understand their, their personality. And my opinion was, uh, we should get ourselves informed about their cultures and then call a meeting to have them at the table um, and get started right there with both both at the same table. Yeah, that is a very good point because uh, it might also help us to notice how we would prefer to be talked to. Yeah, as people, our, our culture also influence the way we, uh, we deal with it. Yes, we have one more question and we move to the next one. And we also discussed in our group uh, the beginning of the session. And mm -hmm. it was because we also have Italian in, in uh, German <laughs> parties. And we have Nadine from Germany. And uh, it was very useful because, she's, because when we were discussing about caucuses, to begin from, from individual sessions, she said that for for German for German person it's not accurate not good begin from from the individual because it it can influence the 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 feeling of confidentiality the feeling of neutrality so the first thing which we decided to to get to know it's uh, to to analyze the uh, the interest and uh, and uh, how each party understands the mediation process the, mm -hmm. to to somehow to focus on on the proceedings and it also included uh, the question of the balance of the parties because we have uh, a worldwide uh, company uh, head director owner yeah and we have a division the head of the division so about the representatives, about the lawyers, about their level <laughs> and uh, yeah. their possibility to, 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 to represent themselves or by lawyers in this, in this mediation. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you might probably notice if you, uh, if you remember those models we talked about that ba even based on the response of these two people, one of multi-active culture and another from linear active culture, that for example, there is definitely difference how they see the um, uh, distance of power, how the power is distributed or uh, how they see, do I deserve something because I am effective or do I deserve something because I have statues? So because I have done so much for this company in some, uh, that, that might also be the reason uh, and, and some topic to talk about. Okay, we do not have, we have left only, uh, we have only five minutes left. So, uh we will do the following we will skip this question and we will ask this question 
what was the most important for you today? We talked to, uh, about attitude of uh, cross-cultural communicator, that we do not jump to the conclusion, that we do not create stereotypes, but uh, prototypes, that we have flexible thinking. Uh, could you please share what was the most important for you today and what new questions you have? Because that was actually the purpose, to make you have questions. Because we had only three hours. If someone would like to share speaking, yes. I would, I would start if, if nobody uh, else would like to. Um, what, what was really important for me today were these, uh, these two websites where to get a short overview and a fast overview of the differences um, between, the, uh, between the different countries and for things to look for and to uh, take into evaluation of dealing with people from these different countries, uh, which, which make a really great overview. Um, and what what uh, the, the questions um, the new questions I, I have is uh, just how to how to apply this in a in a situation because I'm I'm having a, a situation with a German Turkish team um, which I am working with presently and I already typed it in and some ideas from the website um, some some variations from the website gave me an idea how uh, the conflict could have been uh, worked up to the point it is and. Um, not yet sure how to address it and how to use this knowledge in a, in a specific uh, clarification of the problem, but I think it helps uh, in the f first place and at least to understand what, what happened and why. Yeah, and you have Thank been you only three hours with this question, so <laughs> you have your time. Thank you, Alexandra, please. Yes, thank you for 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 the presentation. The, one of the question I remain <laughs> I remain with uh, as a mediator is: uh, Does it really help to know or not the cultural differences of each part? Uh, because anyway, we still have to to observe what's going on and not to give. A, 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 additional power from what we know of the culture because it might bias what is happening in the room so it's really where is the right place of knowing oh okay he should react this way or he should react that way and so yeah i still don't know how much it's helpful to know more or not far you know where is the leverage yeah. of this knowledge yes each additional information puts you into position uh, of new decision exactly. but uh, one thing uh, is that it's important not to stereotype not to expect something mm -hmm. it's just some knowledge which might give you understanding why mm -hmm. some people behave this or that way mm -hmm. so so to to understand what is behind that behavior what to do with that uh, and to understand <coughs> or maybe uh accept the opportunity that you do not know what is behind this behavior and ask about mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. or not again there are no magic pills, there are no algorithms. Sure. But which is the whole magic of, of mediation, right? <laughs> is to ask the right question to so that the others hear <laughs> what he wants to say. So uh, yeah, it's like adding a new language, but um, it's also a question like having understand the language of each part is it really helpful or not i have a lot of, that kind it, of questions. It's, <laughs> yeah it's also okay today uh, to decide that okay that is interesting sphere i might look at that sometime not now so it's also okay because uh, sometimes uh, people when they develop in the profession they feel huh i feel like i know everything and then boom, you got new topic <laughs> and uh, you, you, you have some new perspective. Um, so, okay. My just one, just one more question. I, I've tried to ask several times already. You, yes. You were stressing that you're only giving us a smell of the food. That makes me assume that somewhere you are offering a uh, uh, full training or whole day hey. workshops or something in this. So Thank what you are you question. referring to? Um, yeah, uh, actually, 
that was not how I supposed to do it, uh, not to, <laughs> to sell the training. That was more about uh, explaining that it's impossible to do everything in three hours, like, like impossible. And I wanted to give you this uh, attitude from the very beginning that we will not be able to cover everything. A moment, my computer decided that it's the end already. Uh, digital tolerance. Yeah. So uh, you can read more here in the article that we published and uh, Verena will tell uh, later uh, where you will get this um, collection of articles. There will be not only ours. Also with Olesa, we have prepared cross-cultural communication and conflict resolution in business uh, workshop, but it's not uh, we do not have the open group yet, but maybe if we have some uh, requests, we will do that. Uh, so far, it is offered only to um, as corporate training for organizations who ask for that. So it's two day, uh, oh, sorry, two module training, six days. And that's where we dive into different dimensions. We uh, look at different cases. We uh, develop the different strategies, compare different approaches. It is not for mediators. It is more for business, but uh, it can be adjusted for the context if necessary. So if, if you are interested, here are the contacts. You can find us on LinkedIn. Alessia, have I said everything I was supposed to? I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much. Maybe I can jump in at that point because yes. your article has been mentioned quite often already. And uh, I'd like to, to say that we are finalizing this edition. So we have a whole magazine English edition of the mediation. We are finalizing it at the moment and it will be available in two weeks. And all participants of this conference, so including, of course, everybody here, will get an email from our site with the link and with more information. Um, you'll also receive, by the way, a certificate of attendance just to, to let you know and um, to give you also more information about the immediate project, the toolkit you can use and uh, all the plans we have also uh, with uh, offering very soon uh, a training course on international mediation as well. So all the information will be with you with an email very soon. And, um, we do would like to invite you to join the LinkedIn um, channel of Inmediate to stay tuned and get more information. And um, so if you have any more questions on, on this, also about the English edition of the mediation, you can always contact us here at Steinbeis, of course. Um, and thank you very much also for this great workshop, Alessia and Olha, it was very inspiring. I really liked very much and I hope uh, you have all uh, a lot of takeaways from this.